Good morning, everybody, um, and welcome to the SLI Systems Merchandising Console Tools, Tips, and Tricks webinar. Um, my name is James Fisher. I'll be uh, hosting and running this today for everybody. Um, before we get started, I've got a couple of uh, slides and a bit of housekeeping information to share with everybody. Um, so before we get started, I want to let everybody know that all participants are muted throughout. The webinar will approximately last 45 minutes. Um, and throughout this, if you have any questions, uh, please add them into the uh, question panel by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. And then uh, type in your questions and leave them there. Uh, what we'll do at the end of the session, once we've finished uh, going through our agenda today, we'll, we'll, we'll have a little Q&A session at the end where I'll try and answer all the questions as best as I can. Um, we will be recording this session as well. Uh, you will receive this link uh, in a follow-up email, so if you have any questions um, regarding that, please also add them into the, the Q&A uh, section. Um, a little bit of background about me. As I've already mentioned, my name is James Fisher. I'm a Customer Success Manager here at SLI Systems. Um, I've been here for almost three and a half years. You may notice I have a slightly strange accent. That is because I am from England. I was based out of our UK office for uh, three years over in London. Uh, recently moved over to the US with my family and uh, working out of our office here now. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, what we're actually going to be covering today. So. This is going to be um, very much entry-level stuff that you may have heard before. It might have been recent. It might have been uh, a very long time ago. But it's just going to be a brief and very high-level overview of the merchandising console and the specific areas we're actually going to be focusing on today. Uh, we're going to be looking at the, the top-level dashboard. So that's what you see when you first log in. Um, we're going to be looking at... Uh, oh, it's actually missing here. We're actually going to be looking at tune results as well. Uh, we're going to be looking at synonyms, how to set up synonyms. Um, we're going to be looking at redirects. We're going to be looking at adding banners to your search result pages or any SLI hosted pages. We'll have a look through the indexing um, setup, so how do we actually ingest the data that you provide and return that as, as searchable content for your users. And uh, then at the end, followed by the uh, Q&A uh, section. So without further ado, I will kick things off. Cool. So, as many, of you, as many of you will already be aware, this is our merchandising console. This is the, the home page that you'll see when you log in. Um, now, those of you who have been with SLI for quite a while will remember the old days of a very plain, boring uh, text setup that we used to have with, with just some, uh, some sort of surface links that would get you through to what, what um, to get you through to our tools sections. But, but what we've done is we've, we've revamped this and uh, try to keep it as, as current as modern as we can, and we provide some pretty useful top-level information here on this home page. Um, so I'm just going to guide you through left to right, top to bottom. Over here in the top left, we've got revenue from SLI. What this is going to do is it's going to provide you a week-on-week -week overview for the dates that are highlighted down here um, of the total revenue amount that's come through any SLI uh, journey. Um, this is really useful for just, just having a high-level overview of what's been happening week to week so you can you know, try and tie this in with any emails you may have released that generated additional traffic or additional revenue for the site. Underneath that, um, on, using, using the same date metrics that we've got down here, is our performance graph. Uh, what we've got, we've got conversion rate, again, week on week, the average purchaser value, the total purchases, and then items per purchaser. Again, just to note, this is uh, information that's directly from um, any, any SLI implemented products. Um, what's good to see as well, if you hover over the little question mark, We've got a key, a little uh, bit of information about the, uh, what, you're, what you're looking at. Over here in the middle of the console, we've got our billable usage. Um, hopefully, as everyone is aware, SLI works on a billable query basis. So what that means is if I come onto your website and perform a search, that's one query. If I click on a facet, that is another query. If I select a next page view, again, a, a third query. 
So any time that a query has to be made to the SLI servers um, and the information on the page has to be re reloaded, that counts as one query. Uh, what doesn't count as a query is when a user just automatically goes directly through to a product page. Now, the whether that uh, that be if I just click on a product, that's not a, a query to SLI. Um, what we do is we break this down here in this nice little pie chart, uh, so you can see the split week on week again in terms of the search queries that we've had. If you're using additional SLI products, these will also appear up here as well. Um, underneath, due to them being built slightly differently, uh, we have additional query information for other products such as our SEO tool site champion, any mobile page views you may have had, and that's uh, mobile specific if you're using that as one of our tools, and learning recommendations if there's been any query to learning recommendations. Underneath that is a bit more of a uh, granular breakdown of the billable usage. Um, so we have this split into four parts. Uh, visitors that have used SLI, so this would be you know, a, a visitor session. Page views, so again this is the, the amount of page views, the amount of queries that we've had coming through on a, on a daily basis. Product clicks, so how many people actually clicked on our product that day. And then the click-through rate for, for that day. So that's going to be kind of, we have the visitors, we have their page views, we have their product clicks, and, and finally we look at the click-through rate. Over here we have the index status. I'll cover this index status in a bit more detail as we progress through this today. Um, on a high level, the index is what is queried at search time. So we ingest your data feed and we turn that into our index and that is what is uh, queried when, when a user hits the search bar, types in their search phrase, we match that search phrase against the results in our index. Um, underneath that we've got SLI Live. Now I'm using one of our demo sites at the moment so there may not be any information coming through but those of you who are aware, if you click SLI Live, it actually shows you a live snapshot of the searches that are coming through from your uh, from your site and also whereabouts they are geographically so you get a, a nice global view of where your users are, are coming from. Uh, I've had a few clients in the past who have had TVs up in their e-commerce rooms or in their marketing suites that just has uh, that has SLI live running. Um, it can be really useful for you to see what your users are searching for and when they're searching for it. Um, Particularly after you, if you've just dropped an email campaign um, and you're pushing users to your site, you can see if there's been an increased traffic um, from there, and also where they're actually coming from and what they're searching from. Um, underneath that, we've got our biggest movers. So this is just a, a little view into one of our um, newest reports, which tells you week on week a percentage increase in volumes for a search phrase that uh, has been coming through. So in this example, um, we see that uh, VARS last week had uh, five searches, and the following week it's, it's actually had 10 searches. So there's been a 100% increase in the uh, number of queries for that particular phrase. And we can see what rank that is in terms of the highest searched phrase on your site. So currently VARS will be sitting at number one. Uh, we've seen red to set an 80% decrease week on week, and it's actually now sitting in uh, rank number 17. Underneath that, we've got the zero results. Now, if you actually click through to that, you'll get through to your zero results report. What we're returning here is we're just returning a uh, little snapshot of a search phrase that has yielded zero results. Um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that if this is coming through, we want to provide that information to you so you can either create a redirect or create a tune or it can actually provide you an indication of additional products or product lines that, that could or, or should be added to your, um, your catalog in the near future. Um, we're just telling you what your users are searching for, but we're unable to actually return results for. So that is the, a, a quick overview of the SLI dashboard. Moving on, we're going to cover tune results. So, as everyone knows, our, our unique uh, selling point at SLI here is, is the ability for our system to learn what your users are searching for and re-rank products automatically based on that click data. But there's going to be times where you're going to need to come in and do some manual merchandising. Um, maybe you want to push a certain product uh, that has a, uh, a lower cost price for you or has better margins. Um, 
especially for some of your highly trafficked terms, it's good to make sure that, okay, A, is, is, are we returning the products that our users want to see? Hopefully, yes, thanks to learning, but B, are you returning products that you want your users to see? And there's going to be times, like I said, that you're going to want to control that. So we give you tune results. What this allows you to do, it allows you to manually tune products and promote or remove products um, for a particular search phrase. Uh, now, this is the tuning uh, tune results overview that you see when you first log in. So we can see the conditions uh, that have been set up uh, uh, over here. Uh, these little four symbols are indicators of what, ha what actions have been taken. So we've got the little eye over there, that's a hide. The little filter section, that means something's being filtered. Up arrow for promote, down arrow for demote. The status of the tune, um, if it's been, you know, if it's on a timing schedule, if it's active or inactive. And then the date that this um, rule was actually added or modified. Now, if we want to create a new tuning rule, it's very simple. Big green button in the top right, we click that and we come through to this page. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to set up a, um, a condition. So let's say my search phrase is going to be accessories. Now, there's a few options that we have here. If you're using multiple SLI products, you can choose what kind of page you want to edit the condition for. Do you want this to be a normal search page if you're only using learning search? If you're using our learning navigation tool as well, you can edit how the results are displayed on that page. Or if you want this rule to fire globally for either a search or a navigation page, you can do so. We can get quite, uh, you can get quite deep into how we actually build these rules. So um, we can have multiple conditions as well. So what we have, if I've got two conditions here, you can see that I've got an or rule. So it can either be accessories or um, ooh, and trinkets, something along the lines of that. So we can have multiple trigger words for this rule to fire. However, if we change this up here to all, you'll notice this changes to an and. So this is when we want multiple conditions to be true for our rule to fire. Uh, as a helpful little reminder, you cannot have multiple exact search phrase conditions. So what we could do, uh, if we want to have multiple rules uh, in place or multiple conditions in place, we can change this. So let's just say, maybe if someone searched for accessories and then they've refined to my price range is under 25. Now what that means is for this rule to fire, someone will have had to have searched for accessories and then refined with their price range to under 25. Um, and the $25. So this might be more useful in situations where you want to control the results that are returned for a particular brand, um, regardless of search term. Uh, so you know you could change this to be my brand is 925 or, or any of these brands. But for now, I'm going to keep it a, a bit simple. Um, we've also got the options to change the sort of parameters around the specific word. So we can be quite exact and say where my search phrase is accessories, or we can expand it to say where my search phrase contains the word accessories, so this would fire for ladies' accessories, men's accessories. Or you can even expand it even further to just contain the characters. So if we have a match on the characters that have been entered, the rule will fire. More often than not, people tend to use contains the word if we're doing a broad spectrum tune. Um, but I'd say that the most popular one is, is when there is a direct uh, match for the phrase. So what we can also do is we can change when uh, this rule is actually going to fire. So let's say you've got a promotion coming up this weekend. You've got an email that's going to go out on Friday afternoon ready for your weekend shoppers. Um, you want to have this rule firing specifically for that case. So we can change this to say, okay, from Friday uh, 6 p.m., this is when my rule is going to fire. Um, Either you can have it end uh, on, on a manual day where you would come in and actually you have to you know, cease the tune yourself. Or you can have this um, set up to finish on a certain day and time. So let's say we're only going to run this for the weekend. So by um, Sunday at 6.15 p.m., I no longer want this rule to fire. So this kind of takes that intervention, uh, that manual intervention that's required out of the equation, particularly useful around holiday times. Maybe you've got a Christmas campaign. Uh, I know we're a long way away from Christmas and we've just had it, 
but thinking ahead, maybe you've got something that's going to run um, only on Christmas Day uh, for your Christmas Day purchases. Not everyone's uh, excited about having to work on Christmas Day, so having this set up means you, you wouldn't have to log in and do this. Um, but for now, I'm going to keep it simple and just say when I hit save, and this is going to stop you manually. So once we've entered all of our conditions, we hit done. Um, what we get here on this screen, we, we, have, we have three areas to focus on. So over on the left, we have our, what would be on the live site, our facets. Now, these are deemed from product attributes that are sent in our data feed, or sent in the data feed that you, you sent to us. Um, in the middle, we've got a live view of what the results will be. So this is a accurate picture of had I gone onto this website and searched for accessories, I would see this in position one, this in two, this in three, four, and so on. Over here on the right, now this is where we're actually going to be doing our tuning. This is where we can see the changes that we're making. Um, so I'll start with the, with the Promote tab as we've got this open. Um, it, with Promote, it, it's exactly what it says on the tin. What we're going to do is we're going to push results from wherever they fall naturally into a certain position. So let's say um, these Ruby and Crystal cufflinks. So I make really good margins on these. I actually want them to appear at number one. Now, although my users may have deemed the squeeze barware accessories in position number one based on the click data, you might have other uh, other data that suggests, you know, oh well, I've got a very high margin on this. I want this to be at number one. I want, I want this to be the first thing that my users see. So what we do is we drag it over and we drop it in the promote. What happens now is the product goes green and you get a little number one. What this means is this product is now going to appear at number one. You can also do multiple at a time by selecting in the checkbox over here and hitting promote. So what happens now is if I were to save this tune um, and then go back to the website and do a search for accessories, this would be the order that these products fall in. We have one, two, and three. Everything else would then fall in in its natural learnt order. Now this would last as long as the condition that you've, uh, as long as the timing condition that you've put in place. Next, we're going to cover demote. Again, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's very similar to promote. We drag our products over here, and we say, what's going to happen now is these are going to be pushed to the bottom of that results page for that particular phrase. Um, again, if you want to do a couple at a time. We just click the checkbox and we hit to demote. Now I'm going to move on to hide. There's going to be times where a certain product may be appearing on a search result page for a phrase and we don't want it to be there. Now this could be for a multitude of reasons. It could be because we're matching against the product description and um, in that product copy we've got a match on a word so it's being returned in that result set. Um, sometimes maybe you want to hide a certain product because it's been going, you know, it, it's been selling like hotcakes, and you don't have time to regenerate a feed from your product catalog, get that up to the FTP, and generate a new index on our side. So the simple solution is to hide that product. So let's say this snake letter opener. I don't want this to appear in my in my search for accessories. So again, very simple. Drag it over there and it will now be hidden. Please remember that this will only be hidden for the um, condition that you've set, so where my search phrase is accessories. It won't be hidden, if, if I were to come and search for snake letter opener, that product would still appear. We are just tuning on search phrase is accessories and my page type is a search page. We've also got filters, so filters are a relatively new addition to the tune results. What this allows us to do, it allows us to refine the result set to a particular attribute. Um, particularly useful, um, maybe you want you have a brand agreement with um, one of your sellers, and you want to restrict this to a um, a particular brand. So for this, I'm just going to remove the tunings that I've got currently selected. I'm going to head over to filter. So what I can actually do is let's say for accessories. I want to only show products that come from Baccarat. So what I can do is I can grab this attribute over here and filter it over here. 
So what's going to happen now is when we do the search and uh, that the matches our condition, so search phrases, accessories, I'm completely restricting the result set to my brand is Baccarat. Now that can be quite restrictive, um, but if, if there's a particular search phrase and you want to really restrict it, then this is the absolute perfect time to use that. So I'm going to just remove that and show you how we can actually tune using attribute sets as well. So let's say for my search for accessories, um, I want to make sure that my users are seeing the price point first that they want to see. Now, of course, users have the ability to change the sort by um, A to Z, Z to A, price high to low, low to high. Myself, uh, I like to browse low to high. I want to make sure I'm finding the right deal. But that initial return of products, maybe you want to make sure that your users are seeing the price point that you have in mind, the price point that you want to see. So instead of just filtering down to one attribute set, we can actually push a certain set. So let's say um, I kind of want to promote my $75 to $100. What does I do? I drag the attribute set over here into promote. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to group promote any products that match that attribute. Price range is $75 to $100. Now we can do the same for demote and we can do the same for hide. We can group hide products. Uh, once you're done with your tune, and your, uh, everything you've done is, is set up and ready to go, we hit save. That's now saved. I go back out here, just change the modified date. Then you can see up here, I've got my search phrase, these accessories. What am I doing? Oh, it looks like there's a promote in place. Brilliant. Now, one other thing uh, to look at before I move on is the global results blacklist. I mentioned on the hide function, um, if you, you hide a specific product for that certain phrase, it would still appear if there's a match in another phrase. Um, the global results blacklist is if you want to completely and quickly remove a product or a product set from your SLI hosted pages. Now let's say my Rotunda 16 inch bowl over here. Um, there's been a product recall, it cracks when you put it in a microwave. Um, I just drag it over here and when I save the global results blacklist, this product will no longer appear for any search. And we hit save, that's then added to the global results blacklist. Moving on to synonyms. So, what are synonyms? Now, synonym is when there may be a, uh, a language difference in the results that you want to be returned, um, and the, the search phrase that a user is using is not quite hitting on the copy that you've got in your product description, your attributes, your product title. Um, a classic example, and to play up on my, uh, my English heritage, would be uh, pants versus trousers. I'm still coming to grips with what to say in the right situation over here. Um, but say I'm an, uh, an Englishman searching on an American website. I start to look for trousers. Now, that's probably not going to be in the copy for any of the, any of the products that are on your website and, and in your data feed because, to be honest, nobody calls them trousers over here. So. What we want to do is we want to create, create a rule that will allow people like me who are searching using um, the, the wrong word to still see the results that I'm after. So what we do is we click the green button up here for a new synonym. Now let's say I did in pants and then I put in trousers. What happens when I save this is if I were to come onto the site, do a search for trousers, the, uh, our, our, our um, functionality does a, a quick check and says, oh, okay, so we've got a rule in place to also run a parallel search for pants when someone searches trousers. So what it will do is it will do a search for trousers, nothing's returned in the index. It will also do a search for pants and then show me the results that match that, 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 uh, that paired term. This is what we call a two-way synonym, so the relationship is equal here. Um, we can actually do a uh, what we call a one-way synonym, which has already been done here, so along this line. So let me just delete this so I can show you how we did it at the start. So what we have is we have a, a, a two-way synonym where the relationship is equal. We have a one-way synonym where we have a, a parent term or an umbrella term. Um, particularly useful if there is a, a generic word that's used to cover a wide range of, of sub-products or sub-categories, and, and beer is the perfect example. So beer tends to be used to cover all subsets of beer. Um, so if I, under beer, you would have lager, 
You might have IPA, you might have a stout, um, and even even cider. So someone might have even put in, uh, you know, say you want to grab a beer, you may actually be drinking a cider. Um, what happens when we've got it set up in this two-way rule is if I do a search for beer, uh, I get results for lager, IPA, stout, and cider, and vice versa. A search for stout will return a search for everything else. If I come over here into the type column, change this into a one-way, you'll see that my beer word has now gone red. What this means is that this is the parent term. So if I come and do a search for beer, it also runs a search for anything that's, uh, that I've listed as a, a, a sort of subcategory in that one-way synonym. However, if I was to come and do a search for lager, it's not going to do a, a, a two-way synonym or a reverse synonym search on any of that. It's just going to hopefully show me results for lager. Um, you can probably see down here that we've got several indicators uh, of a one-way, of, of the sort of parent term. You don't have to be limited to one. Now, how do we do that? It's very simple. We click on the term that we want to move, and then we use the left arrow and shift that into the one-way parent uh, category. Works in the other way as well, so cancel that. Let's just move that over there. But let's say I actually want to put that back. We just put the right arrow, and that turns it back into that in, into the, uh, the the subcategory style again. So very simple, very easy to set up but very useful and very powerful to make sure that you're achieving, uh, showing your, your users the results that they should be seeing. Next, I'm going to move on to redirects. Redirects is very, very simple and a very useful way to bounce your users um, to a particular page. Now, most of us who are familiar with any kind of online shopping or use of the internet knows that at the bottom of a page, there's going to be an About Us um, link in the footer. There's going to be a Contact Us link, and there's probably going to be a Delivery Information link as well. But not everyone is, is that tech savvy. So we like to make sure that if someone searches for something like About Us, Contact Us, Delivery Information, Size Chart is a good one that we actually put them, uh, we direct them to the right place instead of showing them product results that may not match. Now this is done by, um, by what we call redirects. So um, a good example that's already set up is the contact us. But over here, top right hand corner, we've got a little green button that, is, that pulls up the conditions box. So this is very similar to uh, how we set up tunes. So I'm actually just going to look at this contact us one that's already set up. So when you're building your redirect, make sure to give it a name that makes it very obvious. If you, if you start to have more than a page or two of redirects, the, the, a, nice, uh, a nicely named redirect is easier to find and understand what it might be doing. And then we've got where do we want to redirect our users to. So this is the desired landing page after the search phrase has been entered. Um, and then we set the conditions. So this is exactly the same as we did with tune results. We have, uh, do we want this to file on a search page, only on a learning navigation page, or on any page? And then we set the conditions. So again, we have the option to do any or all. Uh, when it's set to any, the all rule is in place. And if we have the all, every single rule has to match for the, uh, for the redirect to file. What we can see, what we've got set up here is if, uh, it's the contact us redirect. So if I come onto the uh, SLI website and I search for contact us, phone number, email, complaint, store location, where I'm actually going to end up, I'm going to end up at this URL if I do a search for any of that. So it's very easy and very simple. Um, particularly useful, as I said, I think for size chart information. Every brand is sized differently. Um, so you want to make sure that you're getting the right size. So um, it's quite useful to be able to show your user directly to that size chart. Once we're done, we hit save. Again, very simple and very easy to set up. Final thing we're going to look at is banners. Now, I know uh, everyone might not be familiar with banners, but it's a, it's a really useful and easy way to add a bit of creative content to your search result pages. Um, this could be offering a, a banner that offers free shipping for a certain amount of time, or it could be a banner that's uh, brand specific and just trying to um, really 
hone in that experience that your user's having uh, and, and give a bit of brand recognition. Um, there's two parts to setting this up. There's the creative and then there's the actual sort of banner conditions that have to be met themselves. So what do I mean by creative? Uh, the creative is the actual image that's going to be displayed um, on that results page. Now, uh, our tool is not like uh, Facebook or Instagram. You don't upload a photo the, uh, or an image. The banner or the creative itself has to be hosted on your end. Um, and what we do is, is we query it and then return it when the conditions are met. So, ooh, what have we got? Let's see. One here. Okay, so... I'm going to show you a quick example. The Thompson Morgan, they're one of our clients in the UK. They sell seeds, bulbs, everything you want to kickstart an amateur gardening career. Um, so let's look for garlic. What you can see is I've got my results for garlic appearing here, but I've also got a banner that appears here. It says, uh, do you need advice on growing garlic? It's inviting me in, um, and it's saying, do you, do you need help? Can I help you out at all? What happens when I click on it? I actually go to the how to grow garlic page as well, which is very useful. As I said, as an amateur gardener, I have no idea how to grow garlic. I've never grown it in my entire life. Um, and I get this nice little page that actually instructs me on exactly how I'm going to grow garlic. So what do we have? We've got this image at the top here. So let's open this in a new tab. And you can see what I meant by you have to host the image. It has to be sitting on your domain. So you can see that this image actually sits under the Thompson & Morgan Static Images TNM SLI area. So what we do is we take our banner URL, we come into Creatives, and we're going to add it in. So this is going to be my garlic banner. What I then do is I add in the URL. So you can see I've got my Thompson and Morgan one here. We can add alt text if we want. And we can also provide a target URL. So as you saw with the garlic example, it actually, once I clicked on it, it pinged me over to their how to go garlic page. So if you want to add that, you just add in the, the desired target URL, and that's where your user will go once they, once they um, have clicked it. We've also got the uh, option to do some custom HTML. So if you want to get really into the, the banner appearance, you can come into the custom HTML section and depending on your ability, really edit the image your users are seeing. Um, what we've had in the past is uh, users who have actually edited the banner here to have multiple clickable locations with different target URLs. So if you have a specific brand that you're advertising, maybe cross-site, you could have a shop men, shop women, shop kids. That way uh, your users can you know, click off to various different target URLs. Um, the majority of people will just sort of will, will stick to this linked image. Once we're done with the linked image, we've built our creative, so we hit save. And if I do a search for garlic, you'll see that this appears. Once we've got our image, we go back to the banner section and we hit new banner. So here what we're going to do is we're going to set and edit the conditions that have to be met for my banner to fire. So we're going to use this, we're going to stick with the garlic example, um, and we're going to name this my garlic banner. First of all, we decide where and what we want to display. So out of the box, your console will come with top of results or bottom of results. What's quite cool here is you can see they've got some custom locations that they actually have requested uh, to use as banner locations. Um, now, this is useful because let's say you want to have multiple locations on, on, on your search result page for a banner. You can have out of the box, top of results, bottom of results. But maybe you want uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, top of results. Maybe you want you know three different banners to appear. One will always appear maybe as a, as a shipping information banner, and then your secondary banner will be brand specific, and then your third banner may be time specific to a sale. You could also add a banner that sits underneath your facets, so underneath your uh, refinements on the left-hand side. Again, a good place to have a reminder for shipping information um, or anything that can help entice that sale. So for now, we're just going to stick with the top of results option. Be it new creative. Oh, sorry, no, we don't have new creative. You can create a creative from here, or you can pull from the list that we've got uh, already. So we've already created our garlic creative. So I start typing in garlic, I hover over, 
and get a little image of what um, what I'm actually going to be displaying. So yeah, let's go ahead and use that. And now we choose when do we want to display this. Um, the default condition here is on any page. So what do we mean by this? This means that this banner will fire with this creative on any page for any condition. Now this might be uh, useful for let's say a site-wide free shipping promotion over on, on orders over $100. You're inciting a user to make that slightly larger spend than usual, um, and you're just reminding them that it's free shipping. Everybody likes something free. It's really going to entice people to buy. But uh, this is a specific banner for a specific purpose. So um, exactly like we did, with, we did with tuning and redirects, we set the conditions for when this banner fires. So when my search phrase is garlic. Now this might be more useful to add this into the contains the word bracket. So someone would search for garlic bulbs, garlic seeds, and so on. So as long as the search phrase contains the word, this banner is going to fire with this image that we've, we've loaded in. Now the third part of this is we've got, we've got the option to make this into a campaign. Um, what I mean by this is very, very similar to how with tune results, we put a timing um, restriction on when we want this banner to fire. So if we go ahead and click New Campaign, we can actually set when we want this banner to fire and for how long. Um, so this is just going to be my uh, Spring Garlic campaign. This can either run from when I hit save to end manually, or like we did with tuning, we can set the conditions when we want it to fire. Okay, I want this to fire from 6.45 on Friday evening, and I'm going to have it finish firing on Sunday. Let's get this finishing at 6 a.m. So what we've got now is we've now got this um, campaign set up that's going to have this, that, that controls the timing of when this banner wants to fire. You can have multiple banners to a single campaign. So if it's a Christmas campaign and you have Christmas offers on several brands across your site, you can have them all linked into this one campaign. And you can see every banner that you've got firing and all the conditions that you've got set up. Once you're done with that, I hit save. And then we're back to here. So we've got three steps completed. What and where we want to display it. When we want to display it and the conditions that have to be met. And then if this is part of a campaign as well. So once we've done that, we hit save. And then this now sits under my campaign here. So under spring garlic is my garlic manner, and I can click back into that. So that covers the four aspects of the tools that I wanted to go over today and the home page. Um, I want to briefly touch on the index status and just provide a bit more information on indexing as this is something that we get a lot of questions about in the customer success department. Um, what is indexing? What do we mean by that? Uh, as many of you will be aware, to, to build out SLI solutions, we take a data feed that's provided um, by you and a dynamic template, which gives the result. What do we do with the, with the data feed that we get? So what we do is we get this feed and we index it and we build a, we build what we call the index. Now this is what's queried at search time. Um, your data feed contains all of your product information, uh, attributes, uh, and, and everything. Um, now sometimes you'll see that you know the index was checked and it hasn't actually ran since January 19th. Now what this means is we we, we don't automatically run an index on every schedule. You've got your schedule set up here. Uh, you know, it looks like this runs once a day, but your schedule may be once an hour. What that means we do is we actually, um, we check the, check the file, we download it, and if there's been any changes to the file, if you've added or removed products or anything's changed in size, that's when we try and process the index. It just saves a bit of processing time and resource as well. Um, but we do only process the index if something has changed in the feed. More likely than not, this is going to be changing on a regular basis as products on your end go in and out of stock or you add new lines. Um, we have thresholds in place as well to, uh, which will trigger an index fail if you increase or decrease the um, size of the file uh, above um, or within a certain percentage. This is to stop something like, let's say there's been uh, your, your, your file creation setup has been corrupted and it generates a file with zero products. That's sent to us. As per normal, we, uh, on our index schedule, 
we go and download that feed, and if we didn't have any checks in place, we would just process that, and we would be using a, a live index with a feed that has zero products. So we're going to turn zero results, and that's something that is, you know, has to be avoided at all costs. So we have these checks in place, um, which, which trigger the, the fail notifications. And if we do get a fail notification, and it's something that you're aware of, you can actually approve it and preview it from within here. Um, some little preview and approve buttons appear up here uh, in this top right-hand corner. Um, but we can also help you out with that as well. If you're not sure why it's happened, we can look into it, and we can also get any um, updated feeds put onto our demo site to test. That is that covers it for everything that I wanted to go through on the console today. Um, I'm going to stop that. Go to... So I'm just going to come back to here. Now what we're going to go into is we're going to go into our Q&A section as well. If there's been any questions here. So I've got a question from Stefan at Pacific Press. Does the reporting show results per campaign? Um, it's a good one. I, I'm not entirely sure on what's being asked there. Is this a campaign for... Uh, banners, if you want to see specific banners, or um, if this is to be, if you're wanting a, a campaign for something else. So, um, with that one, Stefan, my information is is on my uh, on my bio. Um, you can click that information and you can uh, send me a direct email. Okay, banner grouping. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So what we've got, we've we've got banner reporting in our in our console. Um, this is currently one of our reports that's being overhauled. Um, it gives you all the information in terms of the clicks and the views um, that each banner gets. Currently, this isn't forward-facing, but it's something that we're working on. Um, so this is a report that we're able to access, and we can provide you with more information around that if you create a ticket and request that. Um, Can you turn a banner off for a certain search phrase? Yeah, you, we, we can do that. So if there's a phrase you don't want a banner to appear for, um, we can make sure that banner doesn't show for that certain phrase. So that's something that we can get set up. Uh, Stephen, why group banners into campaigns? Yeah, so this is um, for the UI side of it, we want to make sure that if you've got certain banners that are running under one certain campaign, we want to make sure that you're aware of everything that's within that um, in terms of it, making it visible for you. But we also, these campaigns are designed to run you know, more than one banner over a certain time schedule. Um, that way, uh, you know, if you've got five banners firing for a Christmas campaign, instead of having to manually come in and change the uh, set up the date, the start date and end dates for each banner, you can group them under one campaign which then allows you to manage um, manage that uh, that campaign from, from one click basically. And so you can start and end those banners firing um, via the campaigns. Um, for those of you who have asked uh, some of these reporting questions that are coming in, Next month, we're actually going to be doing a, a, a reporting-specific training. Um, we're calling it Reporting 101. This will be a, um, again, we'll keep it high-level, um, a look into our reporting section uh, with some advice on which reports should be checked, you know, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, how to build your own custom reports, um, exporting your data into different formats, such as Excel, email, or print, um, and setting up email schedules for reports as well. So that's something that we'll be covering um, uh, in our next webinar. Just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure having you all today. Again, you've got my information um, through the bio, so if there's anything you want to uh, chat to me about, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, again, thank you very much for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day.